I am 43 years old and an avid outdoorsman. I grew up in the southern tier of New York. My father was a forest recon marine in Vietnam and never stopped being a marine when he got out. So I had what I felt like 18 years of boot camp while growing up, my dad being so strict. He made sure, though, I knew how to survive in the woods. I spent most of my youth in the woods, camping and hunting and doing other training. As I got older, my dad fortunately allowed me to go off with friends on weekend trips into the woods. Eventually, I was allowed to go alone. Now, we had this area up in the woods, at least a mile or two away from home. My dad and I built a super fort there up in some pine trees on top of a ridge. We had cut down eight to 10 inch diameter trees with a chainsaw and built a TP style structure with a heavy door and a hole at the top so we could have a fire inside. Dad cut out small rectangular holes in the side so we could see outside. This provided us with a safe place to sleep. It wasn't unusual for me to go up there for days on end in the summertime. I'd come home only to shower and grab a bite to eat before returning up there. On this occasion, it was summer before my senior year in 1995, and knowing it was going to be my last summer at home, I wanted to camp as much as possible. Usually my cousin and I were together, but on that particular weekend, my cousin had stuff to do, so couldn't come. So I packed up my four-wheeler with my gear and guns and headed up to camp. Strangely, the first night I woke up at 2 a.m. to a horrible smell. It was like skunk or dead animal. I looked out the portholes to see if somebody or something was out there, but I didn't see or hear anything. After about 10 minutes, the smell went away. Since I still hadn't seen or heard anything, I went back to sleep. The next day I woke up and did my usual thing. I went exploring, came back and built a fire and cooked up my dinner and relaxed by the fire. I went to sleep that night between 9 and 10 p.m. And like clockwork, I was woken up again at 2 a.m. to the same smell as the night before. Only this time, it was 10 times stronger. So I sat up and listened. I could make out footsteps outside about 50 yards away. I looked out the portholes and didn't see anything at first. But after a few minutes, I could make out the dark outline of something walking around just outside the pines. The moon was out, but all I could make out was the shape of a very large body. I knew it wasn't anyone I knew because of the size of it. So I figured it was some weirdo trying to scare me. I yelled out. Whoever you are, you'd better get out of here now. I'm armed and will fire if I have to. As soon as I yell, all noise stopped, but the smell was still there. A few minutes went by and all of a sudden, I heard this ungodly howl. It was so loud it hurt my ears. 
I hadn't heard anything like that before, and not since. It started out like a scream and went into a low, basic growl. I could feel it in my chest. I've heard every type of call of every animal, but this was different. It did it three times. By that time, I was terrified beyond belief. I sat down and was silent, barely breathing. After a few minutes went by, it howled again, three more times. Then I heard footsteps getting closer. Soon after, I heard it right outside the fort, sniffing and scratching at the wood. By this time, I was in tears. I grabbed my shotgun, which was filled with dad's homemade buckshot, and fired three rounds out the smoke hole in the roof as a warning, figuring the noise would scare it away. It kind of worked. I heard it run off. But it didn't stay away. It came back a minute later. But it stayed at the edge of the pines. I eventually worked up the nerve to get up and look out one of the holes where I was hearing the footfalls as it was pacing back and forth at the pine's edge. I watched it and tried to make out what the heck it was. After a few seconds, I could make out a long, thick tail, and then it stuck out its head from behind a tree, and it looked like an oversized dog's head. I couldn't make out any distinctive features, just an outline. It had a long muzzle, long pointy ears, and its upper body was huge. I remember just watching it, wondering what the heck it was. It must have seen me looking at it because it started howling again. That's when I thought I was done for. It continued to pace and howl from the edge of the pines until an hour before sunrise. I just sat there shaking and crying, gripping my shotgun the whole night. When the sun came up, I sat there for a while, looking out to make sure it was gone. Then I grabbed my gun and backpack, jumped on my four-wheeler and hauled tail. I'd never ridden that fast in my life. I rode that way all the way home. When I got home, my dad was waiting for me outside because he'd heard me coming down the hill like a bat out of hell. When I stopped, I jumped off the wheeler, grabbed him and dragged him into the house. My dad didn't understand what was wrong. I sat down crying, and I don't cry. So he knew something was wrong and that I was scared out of my mind. I told my dad about everything that had happened. Luckily, he is open-minded despite being a gung-ho Marine. He believed me and tried to help me figure out what it was but we had no idea. A few days later, both dad and I went back to the fort to check for prints and check the area. When we got there, it looked like a bomb had gone off inside the fort. It was completely torn down. Logs were scattered everywhere. It had been built strong. For something to have done that to that fort meant it had to have been real strong. 
after that we never went back up to that area.